Finally, perhaps I could ask you about Russia's stance. It's becoming more and more bellicose. It's complaining about uh, Israeli air raids in Lebanon, or mock air raids, I should say, and uh, training Syrian opposition in Kosovo. I don't know. It, it just seems that Russia is really, uh, Putin is not even turning up for the NATO summit, you know? Can you hear me? Hello? I think Russia has, yeah, Russia has drawn a line in the sand. Russia has drawn a line in the sand. If you cross that line, you're going to face us. That's where we are today. Putin is making it clear that if you proceed on the course on which you are going, you're going to end up with a nuclear war on your hands. In our last interview, you remember that uh, the Russian chief of staff has spoken about a preemptive strike, you remember? Yes. Yeah. So they are making it very clear. I think China as well, both Russia and China that there's a line that you may not cross, and if you cross that line, of course Israel is going to cross the line, there's no question about it. You're going to end up with world war on your hands. That is what our Prophet has spoken about as al malhama It comes after Jerusalem is sent to stage, and Medina is in a state of desolation. Then you get the malhama That's where we are now. And that malhama or that great war, which is coming, is going to lead to the conquest of Constantinople, which is a fa fascinating subject, uh, Maurice, that conquest of Constantinople. Uh, only today Medvedev also warned of a possible nuclear war. So things are heating up. And I forgot to ask you about Iran. It is now supplying Turkey with more energy more oil and more electricity in the face of the sanctions. Perhaps these P5 plus 1 talks that are taking place with Iran are supposedly about nuclear power, but probably have nothing to do with it. I mean, I think it's a relationship. If, if Iran is now supplying Turkey with more energy, and they just had the P5 plus 1 talks in Istanbul, I, perhaps there's a connection. Uh, I don't think the Turkish government has ever concealed its position of uh, uh, disagreement with the sanctions on Iran. Uh, the Turkish government has never concealed its position on that. And in the same way that India has responded by entering into direct negotiations with Iran and to bypass the banking system. Uh, Turkey feels absolutely no reluctance, no need to, <laughs> to do otherwise, and Turkey is also following in the path of, um, of India in respect of economic ties with Iran. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to GGN. Um, this is part two of this news bulletin. Uh, this one, the second video, we're going to move into, obviously, uh, Russia, China, Middle East, uh, war on terror liberty sovereignty news links will be posted in youtube's video description and thank you for joining me all right so this is the article um uh that morris was uh re referencing to uh pretty big news uh, i don't even think i had a chance to cover it but it was from may 18th russia warns west against hasty wars which can trigger nuclear war so a lot of stuff's been happening where russia's um and other countries are basically sidestepping um the west and it says here that Medvedev, Prime Minister of Russia, warned the West on Thursday against launching hasty wars which can escalate uh, to a nuclear war. He was quoted as saying, Sometimes these military actions which undermine state sovereignty could result in a fully-fledged regional war. And even though, although I do not want to scare anyone, the use of nuclear weapons, AFP quoted him as saying. It says here, Russia has been critical of the ongoing Western powers, uh, takeover basically it says ongoing violence management in Syria 
which has caused many deaths over the past year. And of course, they're causing them uh, the instability in that. I've mentioned this many times before, but that's only to, um, you know, it's it's the Hegelian dialect. It's the problem reaction solution where they're fermenting all of this violence uh, and say at, and at the same time saying, uh, you know, come on, you need to end the violence. You got to stop the violence. When the violence ends, then we'll stop. Uh, uh, you know, we'll we'll stop pressuring you. Um, in other words, we'll stop creating the violence. So they want a regime change flat out is what they want. So it says here that Moscow, along with Beijing, has so far vetoed two anti-Syria resolutions. And we have New World Order keeping Russia and the West uh, mortal enemies. It says here as Vladimir Putin takes the reins of Russia's presidency for the third time, the Western mainstream media continues to demonize him. It says here, but the way Putin is portrayed is a tissue of lies deliberately engineered to place the West in conflict with Russia. It says here that conflict can be best seen in the recent statement of the U.S. presidential hopeful Romney who described Russia as posing the greatest threat to the United States uh, from neocons to liberals. There has been a consistent drumbeat of portraying Russia as the old Soviet empire getting ready to strike back under the leadership of the former KGB officer Putin. I like how he says here. He says, Western media and politicians depict Putin as a cross between Rambo and an assassin. So... Uh, a godless commie who hates America and wants to return Russia to its former USSR glory days. But it says, missing is the fact that Putin's mother was a devout Christian. Putin has clearly inherited her commitment to the Russian Orthodox Church. In fact, he still wears a cross she gave him decades ago and regularly attends traditional church services. Under his tenure, the Russian Orthodox Church has thrived. And I know there's the whole argument of religion as cause, is the cause for many of the wars. Well, now it's science and, and um and humanitarianism, humanitarianism, which is this whole thing about humanitarianism and uh, the guise of terrorism, is all scientifically created in think tanks, so it's gone from religion to science. But uh, nonetheless, I only included that because, uh, yeah, because atheism is usually synonymous with, uh, like, Stalin, which was um, uh, communism, that, you know, atheism, communism. So, whereas you see Obama... Uh, you know, flat out is saying, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm an Irish Catholic, I'm a, you know, this and that. Uh, yeah, he probably worships the same uh, Luciferian gods as his masters, whereas Putin may actually not. So, I mean, not saying the guy may be a, a, a benevolent person, totally benevolent uh, leader, but who knows? Uh, maybe he's a little bit better than the uh, than the people we have, you know, coming up like Romney, who's uh, was he is he possibly a, a Mormon or something like that? And the Mormons have been associated with Freemasonry, and Freemasonry is a religion of uh, Lucifer. So, but Putin's role in transforming Russia into a global energy power has also made him enemies of the West, big oil, and gas corporations. And lastly, Putin has made it clear that he thinks Washington has no right to lecture Russia about democracy, especially while it flouts international law. Okay, moving on here, China collecting Dalai Lama blood samples. I thought that was kind of creepy. Tibet exiles uh, say Chinese agencies are secretly collecting samples of the Dalai Lama's blood, urine, hair, and are stepping up efforts to harm him, the Tibetan government in exile said. It's probably to test the drugs that they're getting, putting in his water and his food to make sure if it's, see how much it's going through his system. So, yeah, it's pretty creepy, but it goes on here, and it says that... Um, it learned that uh, while they were exploring the possibility of harming him by using ultra-modern, highly sophisticated drugs and poisonous chemicals, and it goes on and it says that um, in an interview, Dalai Lama said he was told uh, the Tibetan women would be wearing poisonous scars and have poisonous hair, that using Tibetan women posing as devotees seeking his blessings. It says here, Mongolia builds NATO ties as counterbalance, so close links between Mongolia and NATO is a step towards a forward for Mongolia, I don't know if it's a step forward or back or if it's not a step at all, but to implement its third neighbor policy of building ties with partners other than neighboring Russia and China. So it says here over 29. See, that's the thing with the whole thing. It's like, why can't people just be left alone? Why do they have to get part of this global empire, this kind of thing? It's, just, it's been going on for hundreds of years, thousands of years, you know. It's like, uh, this is what NATO's all about. Well, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. And I guess it comes down to uh, uh, your belief or your theories, whatever. Is it just inherent in humanity to do that? To kind of, you know, to kind of, I have what I need. I have all the 
you know, Pavlov's hierarchy of needs. I have all that. I've met all those criteria. Now I'm just going to go out and take everybody else's, right? Uh, because my criteria has uh, widened. So is it just selfish or greed? Or is there actually a very small minority um, that's like the devil just sitting there, you know, putting, you know, tossing out these little fig leaves or these little apples, uh, basically tricking people, tricking tribes. Oh, go into national nationalism. Oh, nations, go into internationalism, you know. It says here over 29,000 AK-47s procured for India's paramilitary forces. And, um, yeah, so you saw this in the beginning of the video about uh, India doing their own thing, which they are. Chinese company buys AMC movie theater chain so that the Chinese are coming. And it says here that um, the Chinese company, Wanda, signed a deal in Beijing Monday to buy, I think it's a Kansas City company, AMC, the second largest theater chain in the USA. So this is about propaganda. So get control of the communications prior to takeover or occupation, right? Uh, Iraq turns to U.S. drones to protect uh, oil platforms. So it's oil platforms? No, the globalists who've already taken that country over. Well, they already took it over when they named it Iraq, right? And even though historians say that it's not the same place when it was Babylon, it was theirs. Kind of like the Knights Templar or uh, whoever these uh, uh, bloodlines are uh, trying to rebuild uh, Solomon's Temple in Israel. It's like all of this stuff is just coming back and it's just playing out. And that's probably what the Bible was really all about. It was written about um, that this is going to happen again because the same people that do it, well, they know, right? And they toss in some, some, some good prophetic stuff that they know is going to happen or some stuff like love your neighbor, you know, that stuff that people will accept. And then they accept everything else and they say, well, see, this is prophecy. You know, this is what's going to happen. We have no control over this. Well, it's probably just playing out over and over again until we get it right, which is to realize that we're being duped. So 60 killed in Syria despite presence of UN monitors. So the UN monitors are supposed to stop people from getting killed, right, in Syria. Well, Al-Qaeda in Syria, the United Nations, seems to think so. Well, I know so. I've been reporting on this for a while now. Uh, but look at this. Remember this? Again, May 17th, photo shows Al-Qaeda working with the United Nations in Syria. So maybe the headline should be titled, 60 killed in Syria because of the presence of UN monitors. So I've been covering Yemen. It's been in the spotlight of my news reports recently for a reason. And here it goes. U.S. trainer shot in Yemen. Army advances on militants. And it's kind of funny. They say he's an instructor for the Coast Guard, right? It's a nice way of watering down the story, um you know, recently that came out, which was what? There's special forces on the ground in Yemen. Boots on the ground, right? Drones flying out of Ethiopia and uh, Djibouti and that. Uh, drone bombing people. And, uh, you know, they say Al-Qaeda linked, but uh, we know that Al-Qaeda is uh, basically their own private te terrorist network. So it's not Al-Qaeda. This has to do with, again, sectarian violence. And you're going to see a lot of this going on in the future, like Lebanon getting split into factions or different uh, territories. Uh, Pakistan, too. Uh, Syria is going to get possibly split up. Yemen gets split up between the north and the south. And if I'm wrong, you can correct me on this, but I think that with Yemen, it's, it was north and south, and the, it's the western back, Salih, and that, are uh, they were trying to keep it homogenized into one thing. So they're protesting against that. And this propaganda piece is going to just twist your mind, right? Syrian security forces set off Damascus bombs blamed on Al-Qaeda, says the defectors, which are the terrorists, which is Al-Qaeda, coming in from Libya and everywhere. The military defectors, the peaceful activists, the opposition, which are terrorists, Al-Qaeda and that, in Syria have denounced claims that Al-Qaeda themselves were behind the series of deadly bombings, contradicting the UN Secretary General assessment, which I just included, that the terror group is taking the lead in the insurgency. Oh, it's an insurgency now. Not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but Saeed Hariri aids Western Syria destabilization from Lebanon. They're aiding Western Syria destabilization from Lebanon. That was the point. Remember, it tends to trigger Sunni-Shia uh, strategy of tension. Just like the main cities, the heart of the cities, Beirut, like Tripoli, uh, clashes draw Lebanon into Syria conflict. So Lebanese soldiers shot uh, two anti-Assad activists. Well, they're probably not activists, they're probably armed. Remember, I've covered this before. This is the Saudi, Israeli, U.S.-backed Sunni um, excursion, if you want to call it that. So somewhat like Syria, the Sunni leaders want a Lebanese free army, which Lebanon indicts Libyan for smuggling weapons to the free Syrian army. And Egypt seizes heavy weapons flooding in from Libya, then Algeria. 
arrests Al-Qaeda heading into Libya. We have an Israeli settler shoots at Palestinians while the IDF soldiers stand by. But a Pal and as a Palestinian is convicted of stoning, Natyanu of Israel says he will continue to build Israel and keep it united.